Hey everyone, it's Uri for Gorilla Poker. How are you doing? I'm gonna do another short live play today. No particular focus. I talked about the, the pillars of focus where it's like folding, bluffing, and attention. And uh, someone asked me, what do I think you should actually pay attention to? And that's actually a difficult question to ask because there are a million things you should pay attention to. So maybe the best way to show how much value attention has is just playing where, you know, I have the entire theoretical framework in my head. I have the, the folding and bluffing pasted constantly in my mind. I'm just trying to use my attention and my knowledge to recognize uh, what's going on in hands and, and take the best lines that I can. What limit should we play today, though? Hmm. 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 Let's see. There are actually a few. We, we can jump into some 510 tables. I think there are enough running. Uh, 510 does not play as a Zoom game. So, actually, play more tables. And yeah, I'll make this a short session. I think four tables is probably a good amount. Four, four to six. Uh, We'll, we'll see how we do with four. Uh, you guys, I have some of the players color coded. I actually have notes on some of these guys. I will try not to show those out of respect to the privacy of the players. I think uh, earlier last year, I was playing a decent amount of 510 here. So, top right, obviously, we're going to fall. It's always good to think. Do I know what I would do with 7-6 or 7-8? Or just make sure that, that you're very familiar with these kind of basic situations, which is something you know that comes with getting good preflop sims and just practicing with them. And we do offer those for sale, I think, at relatively reasonable prices uh, on the Gorilla Poker website. Here it goes check, check. And when a board runs out like this, it's actually fairly interesting that this the eight favors my range so much over villain's range. I can just lead almost anything. Don't have to worry too much about checking. You know there are so many cards on the board, and six makes a straight. I can probably bet close to anything I want, and I think this is roughly the amount of money Queen Nine wants to put in. You could mix in some checks on the river, but I think this is the wrong hand type. I I would rather check a bit stronger or a bit weaker than, than Queen 9. Queen 9 specifically, I think, benefits a lot from putting a little bit more money in there. And in terms of what happened, you guys saw villain snap fold on the river. I always think a bit about timing. What does it mean that he snap folded? I bet fairly small, so presumably had a hand that didn't even have a pair. We're talking something along the lines of Maybe king 10, ace 10, something with diamonds, ace deuce of diamonds. A hand that can't really call. But he didn't really consider bluff raising, right? When I bet small on the river, presumably you, you can raise. Like, why not? Uh, it's easy for him to have a hand strong enough to raise. So if I'm thinking about how's this guy playing, what's he doing, I would tag the guy as a bit of a less aggressive, less creative player, more standard, not going out of his way to bluff, which means that the game plan we talked about for lower stakes of, uh, of course here, this is 1000 NL for those who didn't notice. So game plan we talked about for lower stakes of just folding a lot is probably appropriate against this guy, just based on the timing in that one hand where he folded, which is amazing how much information there is once you're paying attention, right? Jack-9 suited, kind of close between all options. I would lean towards just check-raising the hand. I think this is a pretty okay sizing. You want to be check-raising some hands with backdoor draws. Uh, these are, in, in a way, my bluffs uh, when I'm raising. Uh, so what do I mean these are my bluffs? You know, if I just check-raise draws and, and good hands, I'm not really bluffing. I'll just barrel for pot, and we'll check this. And perfect, we got to the river with jack-9, uh, ace-king suited. I will check call, BBB. Mm, terrible turn card. Interesting all around. I, I think jack-9 is going to have to go into the check line here. Ace-king, I will fold, and pocket nines is getting a bit thin on the river. So I will check back because of positions where I on button or cutoff, I'd be a lot more likely to, to fire the third barrel. And look at this, uh, we actually showdown against ace-deuce of diamonds. This is a hand 
our opponent should have bluffed with had he recognized the way the situation works. Oh, he actually revered the pair of deuces, so I guess this is played okay. Queen eight of hearts will get to call, and this we get to three back. It's played okay, but the hand has probably less showdown value than he thinks. So here we have the villain who we think is not creatively bluffing. Of course, ace king suited will always just go all in here, but the fact he's not creatively bluffing post flop doesn't mean he doesn't have you know four bet bluffs pre flop. The two are, are separate things. So I I'm I'm still happy to to shove ace king. Not super surprised to see him fall. That doesn't change anything regarding the previous read. Here, Queen Eight of Hearts villain is just batting small enough where I'm, I'm not really going to fold almost anything. Certainly not not this hand. And yeah, let's hope he shuts down and, and gives me a shot to win a pot. Uh, we'll notice his timing. Not exactly sure how to read into it, but I think it's probably a good spot to bat. You know, so something like this seems fine. Seven five, we're gonna have to fold, and Queen Eight can fire or not fire rivers, and can go either way. Five's kind of a nice river to keep firing. I feel like tough not to fire the five. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna have to end up firing. A Ace Jack is close. Uh, actually, fold and have to fire through. Not super excited about this spot. I have a lot of potential bluffs like this. It's just not a bad bluff catching spot for villain. But the 5 does improve enough of my range. Or it is going to be a bit tough for him to call. Like does he have a7? Does he have 9 8? Does he have ace 3? I assume ace king falls, but yeah, generally I, I get a bit of a bad feeling from the spot. And like I said, the like bluff everywhere, fold everywhere kind of strategy is more for lower stakes at higher stakes. There are a lot more people who are aware of what's going on, so you can't go crazy. Can't go as crazy. You need to be a bit more uh, careful picking your spots. Um, and yeah, one of the things that I dislike about this bluffing spot is that it, it's just so obvious. Here we call a 3-bet, get this board, and surprisingly enough, King-10 actually uh, is going to have to fold even versus such a small bet. What can you do? Sometimes people just get a board that's good for their range, your hand misses, so no continuing. And again, one of the things that gives me confidence in, in spots like this and prevents me from going on tilt is I know the pre-flop peel is okay and I know the post-flop fold is okay, so I'm not worried about playing weak in this hand because I know generally I'm playing okay, I just got a bad spot and I think it's it's very, very beneficial. Hmm, it's actually close. Almost want to check raise bluff this, but the board's a bit too high. Let's see? Fold this. Here we'll go ahead and check raise again. Go really, really small monotone boards. You want to be check raising small because all pl both players have a million flushes. So we can't. Uh, like if I start shoveling money and we just both have a flush way too often, have to go really small. Um, so what, what was I saying? <laughs> I I think I was talking about how. Um, I don't even remember, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's it's four tables. I I might have an attention disorder. I don't know. I I was saying something, but we'll we'll have to get back to it later. It's connected to this. No, could it have been connected to? Hmm. Well, well, we'll figure it out. I see this guy Suri W is on three of our tables, timing down a bit. Nines here, button versus under the gun. You want to mix three betting and calling. They're both fine. As you play lower stakes, uh, there is more rake, so calling becomes worse and worse. So you would kind of mix up the three bets, mix down the calls. I feel like the pair is high enough where realistically you don't win showing down nines if villain is, is playing well, but not everyone play, plays very well. That's crazy. Boards with so many high cards are, are just 
just a bit iffy to call the nice thing about nines is if I river a nine I have a boat but that, that's pretty much the only thing that's going well for this hand so uh, I might just fold this feels close I think in poker everyone has a bit of a personality like a basic uh, gambler's personality of how much uh, you hate calling and losing versus how much you love calling and winning and the same thing how much you hate bluffing and getting caught versus how much you love getting a bluff through and these kind of uh, personality traits you can recognize them about people like i said this alt bb guy presumably just from the timing of the snap fold you can almost like I, I wouldn't be surprised if his personality trait is just you know a guy who doesn't love bluff catching too much doesn't love bluffing too much of course he's trying to play properly everyone is but hmm. ace jack here is close actually just three bet i think Okay, to fold to ace king, I'm always gonna call when someone goes this size. And at this. And. Hmm. See, it was value betting the same hand. In a way, I say the value betting. I, I don't know what, what kind of thought process th this guy had there. And here on 4, 5, 7, 2 tone versus third pot. King, queen's actually close, but I think it is good enough to call. It's nice to improve on a king and a queen, which are really bad cards for me generally. Can we get a card that's actually really good for me and actually have a hand that's capable of bluffing if a villain checks back? Kind of nice thing about floating with over cards. Yeah, versus a, a second bet, I'm gonna fold. I think this folds probably very close. Call like 10 3. I'm I'm a bit rusty preflop because I'm I'm playing all the stake levels. Uh, haven't been playing this one for a while, and five ten on GG network is different than five ten on other networks because the rake structure is different. This is something it's very small, but it adds up a lot. That uh, you know, just playing ranges that are correct for the rake structure that you're playing just turns this funny hand so this guy posts probably by accident and this guy min raises maybe didn't realize the other guy was posting if i didn't know any better i'd, I'd say maybe these two are colluding I, I don't think that's happening but uh three bet and <clears throat> yeah so i was saying about preflop just uh, you know turning decisions from plus ev to minus ev you, you don't have to be super accurate about it but a lot of win rate in poker is just playing reasonably preflop definitely very very important here ace jack could, could do a bunch of things i'll 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 check it back and try to try to show down here on the turn i'll call a reasonably sized bet fall to a big one check back again and River King's actually really, really nice. Uh, this is a card that villain should hardly ever bet. So we, we get a showdown slash turn our hand into a bluff. Kind of my pick. They're both okay. To decide which one I prefer. I think I prefer bluffing. I think this is a bit of a loose bluff. Mm. It, it, it's probably too loose. I'll, I'll just show it down. I had a feeling something like this was going on, but at lower stakes, I definitely bluff five ten. I, I give people a bit more credit, so I'm I'm okay with with playing a bit more uh, solid and and not over bluffing as much. Okay, so we'll end the live play section here. Hope you guys enjoyed this little glimpse into 510 you guys can see me trying to play a bit more i call it solid uh the thing is when i'm playing poker i know kind of what i'm supposed to do and what i want to do so i know ace jack uh, for example in the last hand is supposed to show down with very little ev i know most people most stakes fall too much so you get to bluff a lot 
And then one of the cool dynamics in poker is, you know, if I were to bluff ace jack there and get caught, people could make strategic adjustments to really crush me if I keep doing that. So when I do something out of line, I'm very, very aware about it. Uh, and I want to make sure I'm do it, doing it against people who are not going to know what to do about it. And, and, you know, as you move up higher in stakes, you start being more and more careful. This is why a lot of high stakes coaches talk about balance and GTO. Balance is something that protects you, you know, by knowing that I don't bluff too much. If the other guy calls his deuces or folds his deuces on the river, I don't have to feel bad about it because my strategy is rock solid. But if you're playing in a good game, and hopefully you guys are, you don't want to have rock solid strategies, you can be aware of them. Like you can be, oh, you know, this hand should probably fold. I'm going to call. This hand should probably give up, but I'm going to bluff. Like I, I would much rather I have enough of an advantage over them where... I can dictate the terms of what's going on and I, I'm more in their head and understand what's going on better than they do. So I can be the one making the correct decision. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please uh, let me know in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the Gorilla Poker website. We have a course about how to improve your red line, which goes over some very important fundamental things you can do to improve your poker game and your poker red line. GTO preflop charts, I cannot stress how important these are if you don't have them. And a bunch of cool courses coming up soon. See you guys next time.